doesn't have uh, that carbon pricing included in it? So it's, it's clear that there would probably be some carbon border adjustment if Canada was to do nothing on climate change, but it's very difficult to determine exactly would be these costs would be in the absence of um, more information as to the timelines for not doing anything and what it's also difficult to determine with a high level of certainty what would be the response from our trading partners if we were to do nothing when it comes to climate change. What would be their reaction? What would they deem to be sufficient or insufficient? So what's the trigger for uh, our trading partners? Uh, and also, does it would it capture, of course, some of the the foreign investment around that zero emission economy that we're really trying to build here in Canada? For example, the the thirty billion um, just in the automotive industry, uh, for example. Uh, I think that would probably be a slightly different issue. Um, the government has a, a zero emissions vehicle mandate, so even I think uh, even if we were to move away from a carbon tax, it would probably mean that internal combustion engines would be slightly less expensive to operate, but um, given the mandate, there would probably be still be a need for electric vehicles given the zero emission mandate that the government has announced and will be putting in place. And how about kind of the, the, the net job increase as well around renewable energy, um, the automotive, you know, the um, electric vehicle industry as well? Um, are there numbers to account for that as well? Uh, no, there's that's a whole different categories of, of issues. So the government has introduced a number of tax credits to stimulate green energy, uh, hydrogen, and carbon capture and storage. And we have not taken into taken or tried to measure the impact of these in terms of of jobs and economic activity because they are separate measures. Um, and I mean. <laughs> I just think about in general, um, you know, if we if we didn't have some of these regulatory, um, you know, pieces in our plan, um, do you think that you know companies and corporations would have made uh, some of these in you know deliberate decisions to move away uh, from fossil fuels and into a more renewable and green economy? Just as an opinion piece for you, uh, Short that's answer. very difficult to express an opinion on that, given that companies' decisions to invest are based on a number of factors, the regulatory environment, the social environment, and so on. So this would be one aspect of it, but it's very difficult to express an opinion uh, that takes into account only one aspect. Thanks very Thank much. You. Mrs. Vignola, uh, please. Thank you very much, Chair. Mr. Giroux, uh, thank you. Uh, for once again your impartiality and shedding light on these matters. My colleagues have talked about Arrive, uh, Arrive Can um, several times, but there are other types of software that uh, give rise for concern. Uh, I would like to table a motion um, uh, despite the fact that uh, and I know you for five or six years. Uh, I've got 1,500 questions to ask you. My motion is the following. I uh, submitted it on February the 28th. You already have it in both official languages, and it uh, relates to the expenditures for, for apps that, uh, given that uh, the uh, Auditor General of Canada uh, has uh, d determined that uh, uh, the Arrive Can app costs some $60 million for Canadians and uh, that there has been a disaster with everything associated uh, with it and uh, two, that uh, border surfaces are presently working, uh, currently working on the implementing uh, of an official digital system of records to, to apply international trade policies for commercial duties and taxes uh, to imports and trade chain partners known as a CBSA assessment and a revenue management, a CARM, and that the new system would come into effect uh, for everyone on May 2024, May 13th, 2024, despite a short trial period and and uh, limited in testing. Three, 
the government's procurement website, uh, Canada Buys, Canada.ca, states that the contracts awarded to Deloitte for the development of CARM project have a minimum value of several hundred million dollars. Pursuant to Standing Order 1083C of the committee, uh, the, uh, orders uh, that uh, the CBSA should uh, produce in both official languages unredacted copies of uh, a all signed contracts relating to the development and implementation of the CARM project uh, since the beginning of 2018. B all uh, CBSA uh, communications relating to the 2018 to Deloitte technical specifications. C all CBSA communications relating to uh, CARM uh, release to testing since October 23, provided that the documents are submitted to the committee clerk no later than 15 days following the adoption of this motion and uh, once the documents have been received by the committee that it invite the president of the Canada Border Agency service uh, to uh, testify at a two-hour meeting to answer the committee's questions about the contract for the uh, development and implementation of CARM. So uh, once again, we find ourselves faced with a situation where millions of dollars are involved with the development of an app, uh, yet that said app has not had many tests. and. It has had a very short uh, trial period. So the goal is to know how this happened, what are the results of the test, because we want to avoid Phoenix, uh, 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 at the second coming of Phoenix. And if uh, this will have an effect on the entire trade system of Canada, everything that uh, crosses our borders. That is why I am uh, moving my motion today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this this went out on February 28th, so everyone has received it uh, a fair while ago. It's mostly a document request with a request for one meeting. Mr. Souza. Yeah, thank you for the motion. Um, as you know, we it's, I think CIIT has already passed a motion to study CARM. Uh, I think they're expecting to do it soon. Um, so the question is, do we need to duplicate the work when we have so many other motions already agreed upon today? So that's my issue is we have quite a bit on the go, a lot of requests for material, and another committee is already proceeding to do so. Madam? I understand the concern. I'll just wait till you get your earpiece on. I understand the concern expressed by my colleague, but as we know very well, each committee has its own perspective. We look at uh, uh, the industry. Uh, we have our own, uh, if you like, lens to apply to the matter. Industry has its own lens. Uh, and so I just want to be sure that we don't f find ourselves with uh, Phoenix 2.0 here. I don't need to tell you that uh, uh, the uh, tens of thousands of pages, well, uh, uh, I do read them. Uh, it, it, but given the perspective and given uh, the lens that we bring to the matter, I think that the processes used uh, by uh, acquisitions uh, should be proven uh, to be direct, to be adequate. That is what we look at. And I think, but do believe that my motion draws its raison d'etre uh, from the uh, committee itself. Thank you. Ms. Atwood? Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> um, I'm just looking at the, the timeline that's been suggested, and I see that the 2018 is kind of the reference point. Um, I'm certainly proposing perhaps a friendly amendment before an official one. Um, if maybe that number could be 2010, because um, I'm aware that CBSA got funding for this project in budget 2010 to begin with, so it may be useful to look at from that starting point. Yeah, we, we there's no, well, I understand what you're saying that you can't do friendly amendments. You can do propose an amendment. 
Um, I'd only offer up a concern that uh, getting documents that far back is certainly going to uh, destroy Ms. Vignola's 15-day timeline for the order production. Just a comment. But if you want to put through an amendment, we can uh, debate that. Okay, Mrs. Block. I recognize that you have encouraged Ms. Atwin to consider doing something different. Um, will there be any debate on this amendment that she's proposing? Uh, no amendment's been put forward. Oh, okay. So we're on Ms. Vignola's motion. Ms. Satwin, I see your hand up. Uh, yes, well, so I would move um, to amend um, so that under uh, A, it suggests the date to be amended to 2010 instead of 2018. Thank you, Mr. Chair. While I do understand the intent of Ms. Atwin's amendment, I'm a little confused about going all the way back to 2010 when we're talking about Arrive Can, specifically in this amendment, and a new initiative that the Canada Border Services Agency is currently working on. And I don't know what the timeline is in regards to when they began uh, work on this project but I'm not sure that it's useful to go all the way back to 2010 when we're talking about um, this new digital system that is resulting from uh, some, of the, some of the issues that we've seen at our border services um, agency. Thank you. Mr. Sousa. Well, I think some this of the reasons the, that we... This is on the amendment. On the amendment, yeah. One of the reasons to do so is because the, the, the project that we're discussing, uh, the CBSA Assessment and Review Management, known as CARM, has actually been ongoing for some time prior to ArriveCAN. And the development and the establishment and some of the issues that precluded it from a commitment to be may be worthwhile pursuing and understanding. And hence, we would pursue or we would suggest we go back further to then identify more effectively uh, what has been done in respect to it. Mrs. Block. Again, Mr. Chair, CARM was, I believe, introduced in 2019. So my question still stands as to the relevancy or the need to go back to 2010. Mr. Souza. It was actually not a new initiative. It was introduced in 2010 and has nothing to do with the right hands per se. Um, it was something that was introduced and if for us in this committee to have a better appreciation of what it's about, we have to go back to the beginning. Okay. Seeing nothing else, can we vote on the amendment? Order, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Well, that's not a point of order. Okay, I believe the committee is being misled about the creation of CARM, um, but perhaps we'll take that offline. But everything that I'm looking on the Government of Canada website says it was introduced in 2019. Yeah, I understand. I'm not sure if someone, well, I'll get to you in a second, Mr. Backrack. I'm not sure if anyone wants to share that, but if it didn't exist before 2019, then I'll certainly make easy to get documents going back to 2010. I, Mr. Backrack, go ahead, sir. The amendment. That was, that was going to be my point, Mr. Chair. The date is somewhat irrelevant. We, we're essentially looking for all the documentation related to the project. And I think going back further ensures that we uh, receive all of the relevant documentation. And if there isn't any for those years, then it's not going to show up. I apologize for stealing your uh, commentary. <laughs> Are we ready to uh, move ahead on the amendment? Just basically changing it to 2010. Do we need a vote, colleagues, or are we just fine moving ahead on the amendment? Okay, we will do a recorded vote on it. Mr. Jahawri. Support. Mr. Baines. Yes. Mr. Sousa. Yes. Mr. Kuzmerchik. 
Support. Ms. Patwin. Support. Ms. Kusi.